I'll just now leave it to Sarmad to introduce our panelists, whom uh, we just, it just occurred to us, are representing three different continents. We have South America, we have North America, look, you live in New York, okay. <laughs> and we have Africa, and Asia, <laughs> on this side. Go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. A very interesting uh, mix of panelists that we have. We have with us uh, somebody who has a beautiful name, Firdos Bulbulia. Firdos uh, is the director of Moments Entertainment, which is a film and media production company based in South Africa and Nigeria, and she has been the director uh, at Moments since 94 till present. She's the chairperson of Children and Broadcasting Foundation for Africa since 1994 to present. She's the former president of the International Center of Film for Children and Young People, international advisor and media consultant on many international media organizations and companies, and she's also been the co-founder and the president of ABC, which is Africa's best channel, that's what it abbreviates. Uh, it's a children and youth TV and radio channel in Nigeria, and she's produced six feature films, and she's also a theater director. Oh, man. Six feature films in six years. Yes. <laughs> And she has a very exciting body of work, and particularly some of her projects, which are still uh, in the sort of the uh, pre-production phase. We would love to talk about them too. Then we have with us Mehreen Jabbar from New York and Karachi, both. <laughs> I think Mehreen uh, does not really need an introduction for the Pakistani audience here, but Mehreen is someone who has managed to not only produce a brilliant body of work, both for television and cinema, but has also inspired people like me to make films and tell stories. Somebody who has told very diverse kind of stories from extremely mainstream to extremely offbeat, and when it comes to cinema, I think her first film was uh, a big, bold statement on the, the revival and the new wave of Pakistani cinema, and now her latest uh, venture, which is a very commercial, um, uh, feel good and a very happy and a very colorful looking film, the uh, Dobara Pirse, which releases very, very soon, this Friday, I guess. Right? Yeah. That's Marine Jabbar. <laughs> and then we have Alex uh, Flatus. Flatus. So Alex uh, is a poet and an author, and he has worked in diverse media, including theater, film, literary criticism, and cultural journalism. To date, he has published eight books in Cuba and two in Italy, and his works have received widespread recognition, including the Cuban National Prize for Poetry and Journalism. He has been a consultant for the Cuban Institute of Cinematographic Art and Industry, and he has worked extensively with international directors and screenplay writers. Currently, he's working on two feature projects for the Cuban director Enrique Colina. Flatus penned the script for a film series of 10 short stories, and he has also collaborated on several Cuban feature film scripts. Since 1982 and till 1993, Flatus was the director of press for the Havana International Film Festival, and he has also participated on several festival juries, including those of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the Canary Islands in Tenerife, Spain. And we are also very pleased to have Dr. McDad with us, who is going to interpret uh, Alex for us. Uh, we also do have a, a visual to show, share with you in a little bit, but uh, first I'll just start with a general question for all of our panelists. Uh, now this session is called The Power of Film, and I suppose my first question is, the power to do what? And if it is to change the world, to affect lives, um, does it have that power? Do we just want it to have that power? If we can start with Fidus. I think absolutely it does have the power. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very happy to be here and I think I'm overwhelmed by the Fez family and, and what he stood for. And when I walked around yesterday in the exhibition, I saw that he had written a special poem for Nelson Mandela. So there's such a 
kindred connectedness for me. I'm South African Indian, so I'm third generation, um, but I am, as you would see here, an African. And it's always interesting for me to be in a space where I feel that I'm part of a family. So thank you so much. In terms of the power of film, um, most of our work really is taking difficult issues and producing it in film so that we can find film as a medium to entertain and to educate. And I think in the children's environment, we talk about edutainment. So through entertainment, they're, they're learning. And I think, um, you mentioned Trump, <laughs> when I think about the power of media. Um, I was just mentioning to somebody that a friend, a colleague of mine who lives in the US was saying that Americans are so taken by celebrity status and therefore it's almost like, you know, I suppose it was Reagan before that. But you see the power of the media and film is part of media. And if people do not decipher between reality and what is not reality, there is a big concern. And I think in the way that Hollywood and Bollywood and now Nollywood, for those of you who don't know, the Nigerian, in fact, Nigeria has overtaken Hollywood. So it's Bollywood, Nollywood, and then Hollywood. So the numbers of films that are being produced in Africa are phenomenal. And in many cases, people are taking issues that are close to their hearts, and they're putting it out on film. So absolutely, I think that the power of film is tremendous. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it has a lot of power. It had the power to change what I wanted to do in my life in the beginning. I remember uh, starting to watch films at, uh, you know, seven, eight years of old. At that, at that time, I wanted to be an archaeologist, and it totally changed my perception. I wanted to actually then tell stories. And um, as she said, it, uh, cinema informs, educates, entertains, and motivates. So. There are all these facets. Some, unfortunately, sometimes we, especially in this part of the world, we look at mostly entertainment, and we crave that, I guess, um, in, in our cinema at least. And uh, that is also the downside of the power of cinema. It can actually make you dumb as well. It depends on what kind of stories you want to tell. So you have that, uh, uh, I think, in the individual, the director, the power of the director and the writer is very important in the power of cinema. El, bueno, buenas tardes. El cine es un constructor de identidades. El cine es un constructor de identidades. En Cuba, eh, antes de la revolución que, que fue en 1959, se hicieron 80 films. En Cuba, antes de 1959, que fue el año de la revolución de Cuba, había como 18 films producidos antes de la revolución. La segunda ley que promulgó el gobierno revolucionario fue la ley de creación del Instituto de Cine. The second ley that was created in the new uh, Cuban Republic after the revolution was about this the uh, establishment of an institute for uh, film industry. Y el instituto se llamó Instituto Cubano de el Arte y la Industria Cinematográfica. The institution was named as Cuban Institutes of Arts and Film Industry. Subrayar la palabra arte. Here I want to underline the word arts. Porque eh, se entendía el cine no solamente como un entretenimiento que tiene que ser. Because it was not only the entertainment we are talking about. Sino también como una expresión de la cultura nacional. It was also an expression of the national culture. El cine en Cuba, las peores películas, las películas más malas. The worst film that are made in Cuba tienen siempre una respuesta positiva de público. Even they receive a positive uh, answer from, a positive response from the public. Porque las personas quieren verse en el cine. Because the people want to see cinema. Quieren discutir sus problemas en el cine. They want to discuss their problems in the cinema. Y el cine, por supuesto, crea estereotipos. And uh, always cinema creates stereotypes. El cine no genera una ideología. It does not generate an ideology. Pero sí es el conducto para la ideología. But it leads you towards forming an ideology. La imagen tiene mucho poder realmente. The image has very, uh, is very powerful. Cuba tiene dos fuentes grandes de promoción internacional. Cuba has two uh, basic sources for the uh, marketing, international marketing. Primero el deporte. First is the sports. 
que es muy conocido internacionalmente. It is very much, uh, all over the world. Y luego el cine, And the is the que se conoce a nivel de festivales solamente, For now it is, uh, known in the international film festivals. pero que genera también muy, muy buenas opiniones con respecto a la cultura cubana. It is generating very positive opinions in the world about the Cuban culture, the Cuban cinema. Lately, I mean, uh, because essentially cinema is about telling stories, whatever kind of stories you want to tell, stories which are, say, uh, told in a way more entertaining way or say in a more realistic or whatever a stylized way but I do feel that uh, lately particularly I mean in, in, in regards to how the the wave of cinema is is developing in Pakistan I think there's this pressure to kind of channel for me particularly uh, to channel anger to channel uh, things that just um, disturb me the, the, the immediate world around me, how it affects me, be it the political side of it, or be it, you know, the, the emotional impact of a lot of horrific things that are happening. Do you think that it's, it, it is important to be nurtured that way only? Or what, if not just that, what nurtures your stories when you tell stories on cinema? Um, are we going to show the clip? We will, just okay. after this. Can I, can I talk about it sure. then? Yes. Um, I'm going to show you a clip of a six minute film that we've called um, Cry of Love. And the film is really based on a series of work that we did in 2000. In 2000, UNICEF had what they called violence against children. And they had asked us as a company in South Africa to film violence against children in about seven African countries. And it went from domestic violence, so in the home where the parents abuse the child, you know, beat him up because he's naughty, um, all the way to female genital mutilation to child soldiers. And this really impacted me personally. I remember sitting um, with this child in Tanzania who had, it, it was all about, uh, in Ethiopia it was marriage by abduction, in Tanzania it was about female genital mutilation. And this girl who said to me that she had this continuous bleeding, you know, in like a menstruation, but it was just bleeding. And I looked at the, at the people around me, the UNICEF staff, and I said, can't we help her? And they were like, oh, she needs to write a, a report about what's happening. And as a mother at the time of a 16-year-old, I, I stopped in my tracks. And so whilst I'm telling the story and covering what is important, just like the child soldiers in Uganda, where I'm talking to a 16-year-old who is feeding her baby. And she was a child soldier, and the reason she managed to escape is because she felt pregnant, and she was of no use to the, to the soldiers anymore. I think when something like that impacts you, when you're right in the middle of it, or for example, I was in Nigeria when a woman was dying of AIDS. So not, not HIV, because you don't die of HIV, you die of AIDS. And the stench of death is in the room. And as a storyteller and a filmmaker, what do you do? Because I think at that time, you just call in a priest, you call in somebody who can pray for the person who is dying. And so as an African, telling a story in my context is a difficult one because we are bombarded with images of death and destruction, of pain and war. And so sometimes we do want to just be entertained. We do want to just have a light moment. I remember talking at, a, at an event in Amsterdam where a mother said to me, oh man, we're so sick and tired of all these images of war. And I said to her, we love it. You see it on TV. We love it. Our children wake up in the morning and they see Caspers and they see death and they see their parents harassed. How do you tell a story when you live in that world? How do you come out of that and say to the world that we have to deal with this? And the best way you do that is through the power of the image, is through entertainment, is through edutainment. And so the, sec the clip that I will show you has taken the stories that we kind of lived from 2000 to 2012. And in 2012, we wrote, we wrote the script and we called it Cry of Love because my partner, stroke husband said, 
as Africans, when we laugh, we cry. And, you know, it's this kind of, you, you laugh so much that eventually you cry. And so it's a cry of love. It's a lot of pain, but there's a lot of hope. Because I think even in Pakistan, if you're saying that there are so many challenges, you want to know that there is hope. Because otherwise, what's the use of us coming together and celebrating? We've got to celebrate, and there has to be hope. And so that's what the film is for us. It's about hope. It's about taking the very difficult images, but doing it through performance, through arts and culture. I think so. This is, this is exactly the right time to possibly watch uh, the clip. If we can have the video, please. Johannesburg, City of Gold, also known as Igoli, the richest metropolis in sub-Sahara Africa, a cultural hub and vibrant city with four million inhabitants. This is the city most Africans want to live in. Talent. Ubuntu. This is what we should be preaching. Say what you want to say. Be who you want to be. Do what you want to do. Everyone here is talking about Ubuntu. And yet I don't see these BEE types going back to the townships and giving back to the places that they come from. Say what you want to say. I'm the king of this place. A whole rightful hand. No one will come in here, not even the Messiah, and take the young kids off the streets and mess up my business infrastructure. No one. Who do you want to be now? Ghana Uche Ma Dinozwa Moya Wangugu Razaba Ghana Uche Welcome, my children. It has always been my dream to have an African century. Sanctuary? Where all these children could come from different countries and no one will ever judge them. They come with talent. You know, arts and culture is the ultimate. They could sing, they could dance, they could, they could play instruments, they could... No one will ever judge them. They'll all come together as African children. He taught me how to watch, watch and play. You rich people, all the same. It's not like you poor people are any better. I should have known better than to come here with you. Then go back I'm to leaving. Uganda. Fine, go. I'm leaving. Watch and play. Word is out that you've started a school and I'm... I... Shame, man, you're feeling out of place, yes. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> Free your mind and express yourselves. This is what this school is all about. Free your mind Woo! and express yourself. Woo! Free your mind and the rest will follow. I think happiness is the cure for everything. If there's a drop of happiness somewhere, it can spread and it can become a, a beautiful thing. What, I, what I'm going to bring is a smile. I'm going to bring passion. I'm going to bring happiness. I surround myself with that and I, I give off and I feed off of it. I, it is my life source in life. As a, for my soul, happiness is the sole sustenance to my existence. And all in Stand by me. 
just as long as you stand, stand by me. Wow. Woo, yeah! I'm Olufemi. Olufemi. Yeah. And I know very soon you'll know about that name, Olufemi. You just call on my name. about the quality of the image, but it's on YouTube, so you just saw profiles rather than the pictures. But the thing about this was that we took young people, the, all the young artists are not actually actors. Um, they're young people who are interested in performance, so they were non-actors, and the adults were all very well-known South African performers. So Laleti Kumalo, Yvonne Chaka Chaka, and we basically tried to create a situation where the elders were mentoring the young people, but they were dealing with very difficult issues in an edutaining way. So Marine, what nurtures your stories? Do stories find you or do you find stories? See, I've actually been telling now, so whatever I think, I want to tell, I feel I've already said it. <laughs> but what nurtures me is, uh, I think growing older has helped to form what kind of stories I want to tell now. Um, what are they? Uh, those stories are actually ones that will never get funded. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big battle between wanting to do at this age things that you really want to do and then coming up with the face of the producer who says, put those seven songs in, have to have a wedding because we can't survive without it, you know, things like that. So it's a huge challenge. I mean, after the Bara Pitse, which is a, it's my kind of commercial film. I don't know if you guys will find it commercial enough, but it's my kind of commercial film. It's definitely not Ram Chand, which, and I hate, firstly, I hate classifying films into art and commercial. I think it's a very, uh, flimsy, superficial kind of definition of cinema. Um, after this, like, I want to do, let's say, a very dark thriller, but uh, that's because I've never done a thriller. I've never done a comedy. I want to experiment and challenge myself. I think, uh, for me, the main problem is I can actually get lazy also. When you work a lot, and you know that, we can, it sort of becomes mechanical, you know? You know where to put the camera, you know how to direct, you can sort of just close your eyes and keep doing it. But what challenges you, what can uh, scare you that, you know, maybe I shouldn't approach this project. I want to do that and see if I can do, you know, do justice to it. But Marine, particularly with your career, I think it's very interesting that when you started off, it was telemovies which were very movie-like and you managed to tell stories which were 
which ranged from adaptations of Isma Chukhtai stuff to mm. really like, you know, um, hardcore uh, stuff which, which say stories like the parallel kind which all of us so but now, do you think that the space for telling such stories on tv has also been it's minimized i it's mean it's diminished a lot i feel mm -hmm. personally my best work was in the 90s and once the tv serial monster came you know the 30 episodes that for me creatively i think i was very challenged at that stage because uh, when you're artificially stretching stories uh, you are um, injecting plot devices, things that are not natural, organic to the story. Mm -hmm. And I feel the 90s, because there was just PTV and NTM, we had so much more scope mm -hmm. to do the stories that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember with Kahania, we dealt with transgender issues, abortion. This was all right. government-run television. Right now, even if you deal with that, it's sort of more in a crass manner rather than an informed, intelligent manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it's become liberal, I think it's just become vulgar. And not, I'm not, by vulgar, I don't mean skin showing, it's just mm. the discourse right. has become very dumbed down, generally. Less sensitive. Okay. And uh, now, uh, coming to Alex, I'm ashamed to admit that even though I am uh, a teacher of film, I am not very knowledgeable about Cuban cinema, but I can, I think, safely assume that on behalf of everybody here. So I'm not the only one. Um, so my question really is, you know, we have certain associations with certain national cinemas, like we uh, think of Irani cinema and there's a particular kind of film that comes to mind, or uh, when we think of Hindi cinema or Indian cinema, we think of Bollywood immediately, or we know Hollywood. What is the identity, what is the flavor of Cuban cinema? Bueno, en principio quiero decir que me quedé con deseo de ver la película completa. He think that uh, first of all he would like to say that he had he wants to see the complete movie that you show <laughs> the sequence of it. Si no, si no ver la película del todo quedarme con la banda sonora que debe ser muy estimulante. I was very stimulated by this movie. I have a copy for him. Yo quiero <laughs> antes de responder la pregunta yo quiero decir Muy brevemente dos cosas sobre los temas anteriores. Uh, he's saying that before answering your question, he wants to make two points about mm -hmm. the things we were discussing mm -hmm. before. Yo pienso que una de las funciones muy importantes del cine es entretener. He thinks that one of the most important function of the cinema is to entertain. Pero no es la única función. But it is not the only function. Mm -hmm. Cualquier cine de cualquier tipo, lo primero que tiene que ser es entretenido. Uh, this is an important thing. Every uh, film has to be uh, has to entertain its audience. Y no hay género cinematográfico que por sí mismo tenga que ser superficial. Uh, the genre can uh, not have to be superficial. Una comedia musical no tiene por qué ser superficial. Uh, a musical movie comedy uh, not, does not have to be superficial. Una comedia musical no tiene por qué vender estereotipos. It does not have to sell stereotypes. El arte es lo que se aprende a hacer cada día. The art you learn every day. Cuando empezamos a hacer arte que ya conocemos, deja de ser arte. When we feel that we have learned the art, this is not the art. Ese es el gran peligro de la industria del cine. This is uh, one of the danger of the film industry. Cuba tiene uh, un problema que es un problema universal. Cuba has a problem which is a universal problem. Es el mismo problema que tiene el cine holandés. Es el mismo problema que la industria de Holanda. O el cine chino. O el cine chino. O el cine chino. O el cine chino. O el cine ruso. O el cine pakistaní. O el cine pakistaní. Que le cuesta mucho trabajo acceder a los grandes circuitos de distribución. Que tienen que... Es muy difícil para ellos para llegar al mercado internacional. Porque todo lo que está fuera del sistema cinematográfico de Hollywood no accede a los grandes circuitos. Because everything which is not within the system of Hollywood cannot have access to international markets. Quedan entonces estos films como filmes para cinematecas, film para las universidades. So uh, these film industries are limited to their own countries, their, their, to their own nations. Pero muy raramente se exhiben eh, comercialmente. But there are exceptions when they have the commercial access internationally. La película cubana más conocida se llama Fresa y Chocolate. Uh, 
uh, one of the most famous Cuban film is, uh, is called as Fresa y Chocolate, that means strawberry and chocolate. Mm. Es una película que es muy conocida porque justamente fue nominada al Oscar como mejor film extranjero. It is a very famous uh, movie because it was nominated uh, for Oscars in the foreign movie category. Su director fue eh, Tomás Gutiérrez Alea. Tomás Gutiérrez Alea was the director of this movie. Pero paradójicamente no es la mejor película de Tomás Gutiérrez Alea. But the interesting fact is it is not the best movie of Tomás Gutiérrez. A pesar de que es una buena película. I am not saying that it is not a good movie, but it is not the best movie of this director. Este director es autor de un film que se llama Memorias del Subdesarrollo. Uh, this uh, director has made another movie uh, that is called as Sub, uh, Memories of Subdevelopment. Este, esta, este film que es de las décadas de los años 60. This movie from the 60s. Está considerada entre las 100 mejores películas eh, políticas de todos los tiempos. It is considered uh, uh, between the 100 best political movies of all the century. Por la Asociación Internacional de Críticos Cinematográficos. Uh, it is acclaimed like that uh, by the critics, international critics. They have rated it like that. Puse comillas en la palabra política. I want to, uh, you know, uh, emphasize on the word political. Porque no creo que haya cine político. Because I, I personally don't believe that there is political cinema. Todo cine es político. He, he believes that every, every movie can be political. Mm -hmm. Hasta lo que no pretenden ser político. Even they don't uh, seem like that. Entonces Cuba tiene eh, algunos, algunos films muy interesantes, algunos films que han podido romper ese, ese bloqueo económico. Cuba has made some movies that have uh, broken these barriers. Pero no son films que tienen esa gran difusión eh, masiva. But are not such massive uh, success like that of Hollywood movies. Con respecto a las historias, si se refleja la vida nacional en las historias. Um, he's saying now uh, about the uh, stories of the movie, if they reflect the normal uh, daily, daily life. Una, un film histórico puede ser un film que hable de la realidad inmediata. We can make a movie which we label as a historical movie, but it can talk about the daily routine life of today. Mm -hmm. Hay films cubanos que tratan, por ejemplo, sobre el racismo en el siglo XIX. Hay película cubana. Uh, <laughs> I am confused between the languages. There are movies, uh, Cuban movies, uh, who are talking about the ra uh, racism of 1960s. Pero están discutiendo un tema de actualidad. But in reality, they are talking about the current uh, situation. El éxito de nuestro cine, cualquier cine, es poder hacer historias que sean entendibles en cualquier ámbito. Success of a movie depends that we make a movie which can be understood in any, any time. Somos más parecidos que distintos. We, uh, we are more similar than we are different. Lo que cambian son los contextos. Only the contexts are that we change it. Pero el contexto solo no da un film. Pero, uh, only a context cannot give a movie. Los films se hacen con historias humanas. We have to take uh, the daily human life to make movies. Y mientras la historia humana es más profunda y mejor contada, and as we make movie uh, more close to the real life, es más largo su alcance con el público. Then we can reach to uh, masses deeply. We can reach deeply to the masses. Uh, you know, Alex just uh, talked about the idea of um, international visibility for uh, films from developing countries. Uh, so Mary and I was just reading this morning that your upcoming film, Dubara Pirse, will be shown at uh, the first Pakistani International Film Festival in New York in December. Um, also, your feature film, Ramchand Pakistani, uh, was shown at many festivals and it was shown at the Museum of Modern Art, won a number of awards. How important do you think is uh, this international viewership, audience, visibility, not just in terms of numbers, but in every other way as well? I think it's very important and I think uh, our filmmakers here uh, are probably not very educated in how to get our material across. I think it's starting now. 
it's important because firstly you get to show a piece of pakistan to the rest of the world you engage with different audiences around the world not just your own uh, you get different points of view um, you interact with your peers your contemporary artists from all over the world so for all those reasons for an individual as a filmmaker as well as for pakistan uh, i think it's very important and, and in case i mean the best uh, example is iran we keep quoting iran but it is the best example uh, and how their films have you know on the one end there is that uh, image of iran let's say in the us and what the media tells the americans and then the iranian cinema yes it's not mainstream it is shown in the um, boutique cinemas everywhere but it's it has a huge following um so i feel uh, isolationism never helps uh, the more we interact the more we compete it helps our own storytelling uh, i do believe as mira nair my mentor says if we don't tell our stories who else will so we should tell our own stories but we need to look beyond just our, our own little ghar um building on that again how do you think as a filmmaker and for those and marine and alex for all three of you uh when you say that you need to reach out to a larger audience or say a more universal kind of an audience how much of the context has to be compromised or adapted or changed do you think does that happen when you for example the uh, the the partition of subcontinent in 1947 when you use that as a narrative in a film it it does not transcend a certain i would say or the way you tell it you definitely have to find a way where it does become a little more universal so as a filmmaker do you think it is it is challenging inspiring or does it kind of limit you i think i'm going to say the opposite of what mehran said i think that you make films for your audience and your audience is your local people i think in the south african context we we usually still say local a slacker which means local is good So when you go as Pakistanis you go to the US you're looking for chapati <laughs> you're looking for something that is local that you know that you identify with um Nollywood coming back to Nigeria has exploded and they don't care about Hollywood they don't care about Bollywood they're making content for their local audience and their audience they lucky because they have 200 million people and they they speak in english and maybe in, in pidgin but it's their language it's their issues it's their culture and they're exporting it i think what hollywood has done and for countries like ourselves south africa believe it or not is an english speaking country so you compete in with the language so in an english speaking country if i want to not, hollywood just comes all the time and that's the prevalence because that's what people take and that's what the marketing machinery of hollywood they spend more money marketing the film than making the film and i think those are the things we need to know i think as a pakistani audience you need to actually enjoy your own language your own culture your own story one of the things One of the things we do in as I as I chair the Children's Broadcasting Foundation for Africa we say children should hear see and express their own languages their own cultures their own environment through the electronic media that reaffirms their sense of self community and place and if you saw in our film we have the word ubuntu ubuntu is an is a south african word that means I love through you. I am my brother's keeper. I am because you are. So if you come from that context of I am because of you, you as Pakistanis should support the films that are made by your Pakistani filmmakers. Your stories, your relevance, and that should travel. I don't think you make a film for an American audience to like who you are. you make a film for your audience your people ourselves you know part of if you see the way i'm dressed today i'm wearing african i'm indian south african i could wear pakistani but i'm wearing african if i'm sitting here you need to identify with who i am you have to accept who i am i'm not assimilating into your culture into your being into who you are and i think with the prevalence of hollywood we've done that So our children in South Africa if I ask them the name of a song 
The first song is an, is an American song. They don't even know a South African song or a South African actor or a South African artist. So my responsibility is political. It is a political decision to tell a story from a particular point of view because I need the rest of the world to know my story. I know their story and as you said, you know, the story of the hunter and the hunted, the story of the lion, whose story are we telling? Is it the hunter telling the story of the lion or is it the lion telling the story of the hunter? I think we need to be very cognizant of that. And, you know, I, I say I wish I had the privilege just to do as I wish, as, as, as a creative artist, that I can just do my thing. I don't believe that. I believe as an activist, and I need to tell you this, as a student, I was an activist in the South African uh, apartheid South Africa. I was detained. I went to prison as a young student activist. I went to jail because of what I believed in. So it's very important to me that I, my, pre, my premise is activism and it won't change. And so when I tell my stories and when I interact and when I come together with other artists, I believe that what we, the personal is political and the political is personal. Alex, again, so uh, uh, same question for you, that do you need to alter or change your storytelling or the technique of storytelling in order to reach out to a larger audience? Dos cosas. Eh, cambiar una historia para que guste en el mercado norteamericano es una tontería. Uh, two things. First, changing a story so that American people can like it, it is a, it is a stupid thing to do. Porque aún así tampoco va a llegar al mercado norteamericano. Because even you change it, it, it is not reaching American market. <laughs> El cine es una industria muy compleja. It is a very complicated industry. Y muy cara. Y very expensive. Y hay que hacer que por lo menos se recupere la inversión. First objective must be to recover the investment. Si hay ayuda estatal, Esto eh, facilita un poco las cosas. If the state can help you, it is, it is a positive thing. Yo no escribo guiones eh, cinematográficos por inspiración. I, ¿Usted escribe o no escribe? No, no escribo. Uh, I don't uh, write scripts uh, for some uh, personal, uh, you know, uh, benefits. Tendría que estar loco. ¿Cómo? Tendría yo que estar loco para hacer eso. I, I have to be mad to do this. Yo escribo guiones a petición de los directores. I have to write script as the director uh, asked me to. Porque aún así y aún recibiendo un salario por escribir el guión, en la mayoría de los casos esos guiones no llegan a ser películas. Even I write the script as they say me and I charge for this script, many of these scripts are just wasted. They are they don't make movies of these scripts. Entonces, es un trabajo muy arduo, es más difícil escribir un guión cinematográfico que una novela. So, uh, writing a script is a more difficult task than writing a novel. La novela ocurre en la cabeza del, del lector. The novel, you just imagine it in your mind. Pero el cine ocurre en los oídos, en los ojos, en la cabeza. But for a, a movie, you have to keep in mind all the senses, your sense of sight, your hearing and everything. Y el guionista tiene que escribir todo eso. And the script writer has to write any, everything of it. Por ejemplo, yo tuve que trabajar modificando un guion que hizo un guionista nicaragüense. For example, I have to modify a script uh, originally written by a Nicaraguay person. person. No tenía mucha experiencia este guionista. Uh, this script writer was not experienced. Su formación era más bien de escritor. He was more of a writer than a script writer. En una de las acotaciones del guión decía. In one of the, this script he was saying. Por la escena pasan unos cochinitos, unos cerditos, melancólicos. He was saying that some melancholic uh, pigs were passing through the theater. Y el director decía, pero como yo me busco unos cochinitos melancólicos. Then the director was saying, where do I find melancholic uh, pigs? <laughs> Entonces, se trataba de traducir eso. He was trying to translate this. Había que entonces describir que los cochinitos eran delgados. 
So I had to write that the pigs were very thin. Que, que buscaban y no tenían nada que comer. They were searching for food and didn't uh, find any food. Etc. <laughs> Things like that. El escritor de, diría unos cochinitos melancólicos y está bien. If the writer would have said melancholic pig, then we wouldn't have reached anywhere. Y hasta, hasta puede ser una imagen buena. So uh, just changing these things, you can make a good image out of it. Yo trabajo con directores que muchas veces no son cubanos. I have experience of working with many directors who are not Cubans. Que quieren hacer historias cubanas. Who wants to work uh, about the Cuban stories. Son personas que han viajado a Cuba una o dos veces. These are the persons who have visited Cuba one or two times. Y creen que lo entienden todo. And they think that they, are, they have understood everything about Cuba. Yo le digo, yo llevo 60 años viviendo en Cuba. I tell them that I am living here since 60 years. Y no entiendo nada. And I don't understand anything. <laughs> Entonces, mi, mi trabajo es los estereotipos que ellos presentan, tratar de convertir eso en un texto inteligente. My work is just to convert their idea into a practical thing. Tratar de que no existan los, los esquemas, tratar de que no existan los estereotipos. Just trying to, uh, the, the, just I, I try that there are not scripts like that of melancholic pigs. <laughs> I, I think I can also safely say for most of us that we've been living here for all of our lives and possibly we don't understand our country either, not fully, at least. Um, Marine, I wanted to ask you again, you know, your, your new film is uh, coming up. Uh, now, Ramchand Pakistani was very different from Dubara Pirse. You can, I see that uh, in the trailers as well. Um, how difficult or easy, I know it's not easy, I don't know why I'm putting that word in, uh, or how challenging, let's say, is it to, um, get these, the films exhibited here in Pakistan, the ones that don't meet these requirements that you were going, you know, talking about earlier, the seven songs, the weddings, and all of the um, requirements of the so-called commercial film. What about the exhibitors? What about the distributors? Also, one thing I wanted to clarify, I do agree with you. I think my take on the uh, getting outside was more for the festival circuit, yes. but telling your own stories not for the Hollywood market, because having lived in New York for 13 years, I've only worked for Pakistan television. So I've never really even wanted to enter, uh, because it's saturated. I don't think my voice is necessary in America. It's more needed here. So I just wanted to clarify that. Exhibitors. Um, uh, it's, you know, I mean, as we can see, uh, there are about two, three big players in the industry. There's ARY, there's GEO, there's uh, now Urduwan, HUM, etc. Uh, and there are, uh, unfortunately, we've seen examples of really small, of course, they're not really good films, but there are small films that have come and gone, like Abdullah and uh, uh, there's a um, uh, two, uh, Saat Saw, Sawal Karod or something. Wow. <laughs> yes. That was supposed to be like a big film. That was a big film? Okay. Uh, so it is tough. It's, you know, with these big uh, distribution companies comes their requirements also. And I think the current state of our cinemas, which is not very good at this stage, hopefully it'll change in a month or so. That might uh, even determine further the power of the producers. For example, I know now in, you know, in the last two years we've had like two big hits. There was Javani, there was War, and the rest sort of barely covered or suffered losses. And unfortunately that might create draconian kind of, you know, these producers telling you that this is what is going to work in their head, even though it might not. So it is a danger that Pakistan might go through that right now, and we are still struggling. Um, for a small filmmaker, it is tough to get distribution, not just distribution, but the promotion that these distributors bring to the table. Now, Dubara Pir Se, because of the ARY platform, is insanely promoted, right? The other films might not get that. Uh, some channels are not very good at doing that. Um, so that might, I think, uh, affect the creativity or the range of stories that filmmakers, the new filmmakers in this country want to tell. And we have to find a way how to deal with that. I'm not sure I, don't, I know the answer right now. Well, I just wanted to add on a little bit. Um, of course, Ramchand Pakistani was now uh, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember going to the cinema to see it. Um, and I really, really admired it. I loved the film. And 
then i got so angry because it was taken off after a week because singh is king came ah yes yes, so yes <laughs> singh is king had to you make way for it singh is king it kicked ramchand off ha huh. uh so was that a hard sell in the first place getting it there it was, even yeah. i mean at that that time there were probably we got distributed in i don't know 18 or 20 cinemas now so it's and we i remember I, i watched it in nishad cinema and cineplex in karachi which was this awful theater um it got kicked out it wasn't really re- received and a lot of people don't know about the film when we talk about you know the pakistani films is khuda ke liye bol but ramchand is sort of the poor child who's really not there doesn't really exist and i talk about it but uh it's but it's taught me a lot uh and i think we i'm glad we did it because we had no pressure of anything it was totally self funded uh, we got friends to invest and give money so there was no pressure of tailoring that film in a certain way we made it for pakistan but it ended up uh, going all over the world if i could just add i think the, yeah. the 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 challenge around distribution and and again as i say to you as pakistanis you need to go out and watch those films mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because if she's making the film and it's costing millions we're expecting the audience to go out mm-hmm. um the the problem with distributors is they they decide so in south africa i'm competing against a, a hollywood film mm-hmm. a hollywood film that has had so much money pumped into the marketing mm-hmm. and then you find that the distributor doesn't even send out your marketing material the little bit that you have um i i spoke to a um one of the the in the, the journalists when one of when this film went out mm-hmm. and she said you know i have not been given anything but i have the film that's competing with you right now is like a big blockbuster and i i don't even need the material because i can go online but the distributor will send it to me so i think it's a huge education and it's an education for broadcasters distributors everybody has to believe in it and all of the people working in the sector needs to believe and needs to support it we don't have that and therefore we find you know we're independent filmmakers with our little story somewhere paddling as if we were paddling drugs when in fact what we're doing is giving you education and you should be so grateful to get it and to get it packaged in the way that she would because she's a storyteller from your community with your ethos and your understanding um the, the sometimes we ourselves our audiences actually sell us out and that's a challenge yes. there you go <laughs> i think i'm not right i like that <laughs> in that regard and, and i guess so uh, we're almost out of time so this is just going to be the final question again it's open to everyone alex we can ask you as start with you also um has the internet helped in any way in getting word out in getting uh creating awareness about uh your films your work not only within your own communities but outside as well el el lenguaje cinematográfico necesita ser aprendido. Uh, the language of the film industry needs to be learned. La internet y los medios eh, electrónicos de producción de cine. Uh, the internet and electronic media democratizan el acceso a la imagen. They helps uh, to educate people about this. Pero también bajan la calidad. But they also alter the quality. Porque cualquier persona que tiene una cámara y en su casa una computadora puede hacer una película. Because every any person who has a camera and has a computer can make a movie. Mm. Antes cuando uno iba a la biblioteca tomaba un libro que primero fue trabajado por un editor. Uh, in uh, before we used to go to the libraries we took a, uh, a book that was edited by from another person. Pero ahora va a internet y cualquiera sube un texto sobre lo que uno está buscando. Now because of internet anyone can write a book and it is there to you you can see it. ¿Quieres hacer una película sobre mariposas? You want to make a movie about butterflies. Y hay 5 millones de entradas. And you have 5 million movies of butterfly. ¿Cuáles son las buenas entradas para? Now how we find which are the good ones? <laughs> La internet es una herramienta. Internet is a tool. No es ni buena ni mala. It is not good, it is not bad. Se puede utilizar bien o mal. It is how we use it. La tecnología, cualquier tecnología tiene que estar al servicio de las historias. Uh, every every service that we have has to be scrutinized. Me recuerdo ahora de una película norteamericana que ya para muchos será muy lejana, pero uh, para mí sucedió el otro día. I I want to recall an American movie for me it is recent but for you it might be very old. 
Eh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Una película carísima. Very expensive movie. ¿Cuántas películas pakistaníes se pueden hacer con lo que se hizo Jurassic Park? Pakistani movies can be made with this budget. Yeah. Entonces, la competencia es desleal. The, com the competition is real. Nosotros necesitamos utilizar los medios como Internet para eh, divulgar la buena cultura. We uh, need to be responsible in using Internet just to spread good norms and good values. Nuestra riqueza son nuestras diversidades. Uh, our richness is in our diversity. A pesar de que todos somos muy parecidos. Although we are very similar. El buen arte no da respuestas. A good art doesn't reply, doesn't respond. El buen arte no adoctrina. O sea, que le meto una idea política a la gente de la cabeza. A good art doesn't impose uh, things, political ideas. El buen arte es aquel que hace buenas preguntas. It asks good questions. Que las personas salen del cine con la cabeza llena de preguntas. When you uh, come out from the cinema, you come with a lot of questions. This is a good art. Y que en el tiempo que duraron en ver la película, the time uh, you spend watching the movie, han tenido experiencias humanas tan intensas Uh, you have experienced so many uh, sentiments and emotions como no hubieran podido tener en ese mismo tiempo en su vida diaria that in your uh, if you haven't seen the movie in your daily life you wouldn't have possible you, you wouldn't have experienced those emotions and those uh, sentiments yo no creo en que hay que decir a las personas mira esta película y esta no la mires no creo en la censura we cannot tell the person that you must watch this movie and you must not watch this movie creo que es un tema de educación This is all about educating the masses. Creo que uno, si conoce el lenguaje cinematográfico, si aprecia, tiene herramientas para apreciar un film, saber por qué es bueno o por qué es malo. You yourself have to, you have yourself has, have to be the judge to determine which movie is good, which is not. Puede entretenerse mucho con una película como El Ciudadano Kane. ¿Cómo cuál? Ciudadano Kane. Kane es un apellido. Uh -huh. Citizen Kane. Esa es una película sí, de la... norteamericana. Uh -huh. Uh, that there was a movie, uh, Kane City, you can uh, just enjoy this movie. Porque okay. entretenerse no es bailar en, en el asiento. Uh, entertainment is not about dancing in the, in the seat. Que también uno puede bailar en el asiento. If you want to, you, you can uh, dance. <laughs> entretenerse es entender que la película está dialogando con uno. Entertainment is that you feel yourself in the movie, that you are just into the movie. Yes. That's all. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are out of time, and as you know by now, that Fairs Foundation is extremely strict about timings, and I, I know I'm going to get this signal from there any moment now. So before that happens, uh, I will just thank all of our guests for being here. I think it's been a wonderful session. We've learned something about different parts of the world and ourselves as well, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. Yes, Alex would like to add something. In realidad, estos temas son temas muy complejos. These uh, topics are very complicated. Siempre nos vamos a quedar con deseos de seguir hablando. We are always going to be, uh, have more desire to talk about this and mm -hmm. continue. Deberían invitarnos para el año que viene, seguir hablando. You, you must invite us for the next year. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. As Fez would have said, Geet nashtar to nahi, moon is so gham khar sahi. So I think ye geet hume likhte rehne chahiye, filme banate rehna chahiye. Thank you very much. Thank you.